welcome to our video tutorial today on how to make a booking utilizing our booking chart. As you can see, I have our chart already loaded on the screen for us. For those of you who are wanting quick access to this, we do recommend that you pin it into your favorites bar on the left. Or for those of you who use it occasionally, bearing in mind you can always navigate using your main menu search and locating your chart in the left here. When you are on the booking chart, the top right gives you options as to what you're able to do on this page, such as resetting the settings if you've adjusted those, or reloading what you've currently been looking at, changing the mode from a regular or standard booking to a group or split, which we have available in other video tutorials for you to watch. We also have a shortcut to jump down to specific styles of accommodation for those of you who offer a large number of accommodation types. Rate periods is a great shortcut to jump to a particular date in the future where your pricing may fluctuate. As you can see, the dates on here have changed and so has the color. If we want to reset back to our current date, simply reset chart and that will restore it back to our current date. We have the calendar option here, which allows us to use our drop down for our month and year and also the forward and back arrows to go to a particular date. You can also search for bookings on the chart using the search chart option. We also provide a filter feature here, which allows you to filter sites or room types based on their size dimensions. As an example, if I place 10 in here and click, it will then reload and show me any sites or styles of accommodation that meet that size requirement to ensure I put a guest in the right room or site. In addition, if we head over to the accommodation features, if you have set up features at a category or site level, you can then search based off of those parameters as well. Simply enter and then reload and new book will reload to show rooms or sites that have that available within them. Lastly, under our filter section, you also have the ability to preset the amount of guests that you're wanting to quote for. So if a guest calls over the phone and they are advising that they're traveling with four people, when it comes to making a booking, you simply click the first night and last night and it will give you the base price. But if it is going to be for extra people and you do charge extra, you'll see when I put that price in, it actually automatically increases. To make an actual booking from here, all we then need to do is head to the Add From Chart icon in the top right and select New Booking. That will then take us to our Add Booking page and there are some core areas that we need to fill out in this section. The first being the primary guest. Anything with the red asterisk is mandatory and must be filled out. Always bear in mind that it's helpful to get in the habit of searching for the guests before you create them in the system. That just ensures you keep a nice clean guest database. As an example, if I search for John Doe, we can see if he has stayed before, we simply select his guest profile. If you selected the guest incorrectly, you can click on the trash can icon here to remove John's details. If you simply needed to update his contact information as it was no longer up to date, you can click the edit pencil to adjust those. Alternatively, if the guest was not listed in the database and you needed to set them up for the first time, you simply click on the plus sign here and that's where you enter first name, last name, address and contact information such as their email, mobile or cell phone number. Once we're happy with the guest selection, we can then move down and check our arrival and departure dates which were pre-selected from the chart but can be adjusted if needed using the calendar options over here. We have the ability to also select the plus signs on the right hand side to advise of a specific time of arrival. So if you are guaranteeing them an early check-in or a late departure, simply click this here. If you aren't guaranteeing an early check-in, you can put an estimated time of arrival just so that your staff are aware when they are potentially going to be arriving. We can check out adults, children, infants and animals here and, you know, adjust as necessary. This will also ensure that the rates that are displaying below are updating as you amend those details. On the right, we also want to ensure that we've selected again the right style of accommodation. You can move this by using the drop down. For those of you who have a map, you can also select the map icon here and actually double click and select a style of accommodation that they want to potentially be moved into instead if they've changed their mind. Underneath you can lock a booking and this simply allows you to ensure that John's booking is locked into 202 as he may have requested it. 
and stops staff from moving them onto other rooms within that style of accommodation. Flagging is also another option that you're able to use to identify to staff that there is a, an important note or reason that this booking has been flagged. As an example, maybe they need to pay on arrival. Booking status for all new bookings will generally be unconfirmed until payment is taken and once you start receiving payments, the booking status will update to confirmed. Moving down the page, we have our billing section and we're looking at our quoted rates here. This is then showing us our three rate types that we have available to book for these dates. You have your total cost here and what the average works out to be per night. If you're wanting to add a discount onto this day, you have the booking discount drop down here. Once selected, that's then going to show you the discount and what the new stay cost will be. For anyone wanting to manually adjust the pricing, you can double click per night and adjust this. You can also adjust the overall cost by double clicking it here and it will override an average per night. Or if you would like to override what the actual average nightly cost is, you can also do that in this section here. To remove any overrides, you also have the cross button in this section. For those of you who allow additional guests to potentially stay for set nights during the stay, you can select guest per night mode yes, which will bring this additional column up here. And it allows you to add or minus off additional guests for those specific nights. As an example, if I click here, I may say that I want to have an additional adult for Wednesday the 15th. I can choose to register their details, otherwise I simply generate and save. And you can actually see the price has jumped up and my in-house list is going to be accurate on that night advising that we have an additional guest staying. Moving down the page, we then have our deposit rules and this is indicating to us how much money needs to be paid as a deposit in order for this booking to be confirmed. We have two deposit rules here. The initial is advising that we need to pay one night of accommodation as soon as the booking is paid, but we also have to pay 100% of the total within seven days of arrival. So today, we're essentially going to have to pay a total cost in order to confirm our booking. To keep this simple, all we then need to do is save the booking. That will then create a booking ID for us and you'll see that any automated contact that you potentially have set up to send to guests will be sent out. The text is in red indicating that John owes money. If we have a look at our booking billing table on the right hand side here, we can see the cost of the stay minus the discount and what the total works out to be. Underneath we then have our two payment options here to receipt the accommodation. As you can see, the pay deposit and the full balance buttons match, indicating the full amount of their stay is required to be paid today in order for their booking to be changed to confirmed. To receipt this, simply click either payment option. It will then show the payment amount. You then need to select whether you'll be manually receiving this or charging via a credit card gateway or utilizing your integrated FPOS terminal. Once you've selected how they're receiving this payment, Simply save the transaction. That will load a receipt and you can choose to send that off to the guest or print if they are in front of you. If we choose to send them a manual booking confirmation, we simply send contact. That will pull through John's contact email address and we can select from a list of existing templates in the system. Once we've selected the one that we're looking for, we then simply head to send email in the top right. That will indicate we've sent that successfully to John. And if we pop back to view the booking, you can see the red text is no longer here. The status is now confirmed and we have a $0 green balance in the billing section here. For any correspondence that has been sent as well, you will notice they are listed over in our additional information section on the left. The last area I'd quickly like to show you as well is our knowledge base section. So when we're viewing a booking, if you click into the question mark icon in the top right corner, it's actually going to show you helpful or recommended articles on everything booking related. So if you are wanting to expand your new book knowledge, click onto the question mark icon and it's going to give you helpful articles on other 
areas of new book that you can utilize or additional information on the feature that you're already viewing. So if you're wanting to learn how to cancel a booking, simply click on this. It will show the extra information. If this is something you find helpful, you can also pin it to your own favorites bar and that will then be located in the favorites icon in the bottom right here where you can see articles that are helpful for your role and you can refer back to at a later stage. The same goes for if you are viewing the knowledge base on your bookings chart. If you click on here and click on the question mark icon, it's going to give you helpful info on other things you're able to achieve on the bookings chart as well, such as group bookings, completing waitlist bookings, and so on. That does bring us to the end of our video tutorial today. I hope you've learned a lot and we look forward to seeing you in our next video tutorial.